So week one of Custom Fit, we're gonna be talking about how prayer is a custom fit for every believer. I've heard people say, yeah, but pastor, prayer is just not my thing. As a Christian, as a follower of Christ, prayer is actually a fundamental, foundational part of every believer. It's custom fit for our lives. And I wanna dive in, and this isn't an all-encompassing moment, but there are many prayers that we will pray over the course of our Christian walk, all throughout seasons. And over the last 20 years of ministry that we've been able to be a part of, there are three categories I wanna unpack today that I've seen typically prayer fall within. There's hundreds, but I wanna just focus on these three. So the title of week one of Custom Fit is I have to pray just to make it today. Come on, look at the person next to you and say, you have to pray just to make it today. And like the prophet MC Hammer once said, we have to pray just to make it today. Some of you are like, who's MC Hammer? So we're meeting age is 30, just Google him. He was a poet, okay. Here's, here's our anchor verse. Yeah, I'm feeling punchy. I haven't preached in a minute. Okay, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. It's on the screens. It says, rejoice always. How often? Okay. Pray continually. How often? Continually. continually. There's a perpetual place. Pastor, you know, I got a job. I can't just be walking around praying all the time. No, it's this, it's this heart condition. It's a posture. 1 Peter 5, 6 says to position yourself under the mighty hand of God. That is a heart posture. So when you get in the car and instead of self-medicating with loud music to try to drown out the noise in life, no, you're just like, Lord, I need you. Lord, I just wanna talk to you. He loves hanging out with you. That's wild. Like, he not only loves you, but he actually really likes you. You ever met somebody you're like, I love you, bro? I don't like that guy very much. <laughs> he not only loves you, but he likes you. So pray continually. Verse 18, give thanks in all circumstances. How often? All. all. All the time. We give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Come on, let's pray. Father, I thank you for ears to hear you. We need them. We need a mind sharp and ready to understand. And most importantly, God, we need a heart prepared to receive. God, we need a deposit today. When the world is so uh, unstable and there's so many uncertainties, God, we need you more than ever. Holy Spirit, we need your comfort we need a deposit. We want to all unanimously agree that today your presence was in every room, meeting at us at home. And God, I pray that when we walk out today, we leave marked by your presence. If you receive it, shout amen. amen. So there are things in life that we really don't question if they'll deliver. Some of you are like, right, Papa John's, DoorDash, Instacart. Now there's these things, those are deliverables. Those are companies that deliver Uber Eats, etc. But there are places that we know that we can count on because they have a reputation of having what we're looking for. There's this expectancy that if we go to these specific places, they're gonna have what you need. So I'm gonna play a little game real quick. So this is gonna be a crowd interactive moment. It's gonna involve you to have some like live feedback. So let's practice. If you're gonna engage, just shout on three, I'm in. One, two, three. I'm in. That's pretty good, it's decent. Try one more time, one, two, three. I'm in. Okay, here's a little quiz. Uh, if you need to buy a battery for your vehicle, I have known this from experience because all four of my kids gathered, I think, in a corner and said, turn every light on in mom's car. Because they did. They left him on. I think they even left a door ajar. And I came out to start her car, and it was like, rrr, rrr, rrr. I'm, nope, I'm not starting. And so I grabbed that little battery pack that we have, and I hooked it up and jumped it. And, and I was like, babe, I got to go to a place that carries batteries. So there's different places that I know. So on the way, as long as it didn't turn the car off, watch this, I stopped by Wendy's and got me a Frosty. Amen. Come on. A little detour, a little distraction. Because <laughs> if Frosties are wrong, I don't want to be right. Now, we're on day one of the fast, and I'm already... <sighs> okay, amen. So if you're going to go to buy a battery, you have two options. Here we go. We've got advanced auto parts. Okay, it's a pretty good option. And then the second choice would be Build-A-Bear. So on the count of three, which one? One, two, three. Exactly. But both will cost you $250. And in one month, the little heartbeat and the little voice thing that you're like, I love you, Cody, will die. And your kids will want you to go back. So, but anyways, we know advanced auto parts. We know they have a reputation on having what we need. Okay, next quiz. Y'all pass that one. Late night cereal run. Mom's out of town. Dad's on the hook for the meal, he said, we're gonna do cereal night, so we gotta go to, number one, Trader Joe's, okay. or number two, Golf Galaxy. Uh, 
That's a trick question, because dads are like, but kids can also eat beef jerky and Gatorade. <laughs> have that at Golf Galaxy. All right, so what's the answer? One, two, three. Trader Joe's, we know that we can count on it. Last one, exciting night out. Family and friends gather. We know there's long lines that are waiting us. Hot and sweaty, standing in a line with our ticket, waiting our turn to get in. Hard, uncomfortable seats in our future. Tempers flaring, option one. It's a Houston Astros baseball game. Or number two, the local DMV. <laughs> Those are the two. <laughs> it's pretty similar. They run parallel. Which one on three? One, two, three. So never in my life, never one time in our marriage have I said, hey, I need it. She, Jack said, hey, I need you to go buy something at the grocery store. I'm like, give me a second. I call H-E-B. I'm like, what was your name? Linda? Okay, cool. Do y'all still stock and sell cereal? I'm like, sir, are you okay? Why? Because they have a reputation of having what? We need, not one time have I ever done that. No, we willingly drive to the place with expectation that it'll be in stock. Why? Again, they have a reputation of having what we're needing. I've never gone to advanced auto parts stressed or panicked, wondering if they have batteries. Their entire business is built on having these things in stock. So I make a trip, I make the effort, expecting they'll have what I need. We go to the Astro games, we sweat it out in the sun, we almost get in a fist fight. The Phillies fan, that one kid that's only ever had timeouts in his life pours his Dr. Pepper down your back. But it's worth it because we're cheering on our boys. They're going to come through. Come on, somebody shout, go Astros. Let's go. It wasn't spiritual law, but I love it. But watch this. When it comes to prayer, and as some of y'all seasoned saints, you know where I'm going with this. When it comes to prayer, we as Christians are slow to prioritize, slow to work times of prayer into our daily or even weekly rhythms. Let me submit this to you. Is it possible that we've lost our expectation in the power of prayer? Six premium minutes ago, I got up here and said, 21 days, prayer and fasting. We're going to be there Saturday. Who's going to be there? Some of you are like, nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> Have we maybe lost the awe and the wonder, the expectation in the power of prayer? I'm going to say this with boldness, not at Hope City. As your pastors, we believe in the power of prayer way too much to dismiss it. We believe in what God wants to do and unlock in your life way too much to not say, let's set aside 21 days of prayer and fasting so that our church family across all of our locations and people that watch all over the world can gather and unite and receive their miracle. We believe that one encounter with God, his loving kindness, everything, his goodness and his mercy really can change everything. So let me speak prophetically for a moment. Close your eyes. We believe there's a cloud that will fill every room every time we gather to pray. And we believe the favor of God is gonna overshadow us during this 21 days of prayer and fasting that we're going to encounter a God who is eager to answer, who is eager to show up and fight for you, to show up and provide what you need. And as your pastors, we're gonna nudge you a little bit. We're going to boldly proclaim and challenge you because our heart is that you would encounter his presence and provision in this season like you've never seen before. Come on, somebody shout amen if you receive it. Come on. Well, I'm, I'm only 10 minutes in. I'm already sweating up here like Bishop Jakes. It's a hot day. Amen. All right, so the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, because this verse is out of a position of sonship. This verse is out of a posture of you knowing who you are and whose you are. 1 John 5, 14 says this. This is the confidence. I love that. This is the confidence we have when approaching God that anything we ask according to his will, he hears us. I've got great news for you. It is his will to see you healed. It is his will to see you not just surviving life, but thrive in life. It is his will for you to step out of broken places into a season of breakthrough. It is his will to see the things that have been falling apart begin to fall into place. But here's the foundation. Every time we gather, even today, we have to gather with expectation. Look at the person next to you and say, I'm expecting my miracle over the next 21 days. Come on, look at your second choice and say, I'm expecting that you're going to receive your miracle. So when we show up with expectation... We also show up full of faith, full of a boldness and a confidence, knowing that he will provide what he says he'll provide, knowing that his promises don't have expiration dates on them. 
knowing that his promises don't break when we lean on them. So when we gather, we gather with expectation because prayer without expectation is simply empty religion. It's just a hobby. We just go through the motions. So again, as your pastors, for the past 20 years, we've watched these different patterns. And so I'm gonna look at three categories today that we see people walk out their prayer life in. The first one we're gonna download and talk about is prayers of desperation. Prayers of desperation, it's up on the screen. These are the prayers. I think we all know what this would be, and more than likely, we prayed one of these prayers within the last week. Some of you are like, I prayed that 20 minutes ago. (laughs) Prayers of desperation, these are prayers that when your back's against the wall, these are typically the time that prayers of desperations happen. I remember being in the bathroom, that little bathroom. I've told this story before. When they rushed my wife into emergency surgery, I wasn't in there uh, just g- g- flipping through Instagram. I, I wasn't in there just, just kind of hanging out. And I was in there begging and pleading with God, asking for an intervention. It was a prayer of desperation. And we're going to unpack this and look at how David prayed these type of prayers. We all know what these prayers look like. Some of them, just adding a little humor to this, some of you would say a prayer of desperation is believing God to split the Houston traffic like the Red Sea. Amen. Lord, convict my neighbor. Tell him to stop running his leaf blower at 6.30 a.m. This is a premeditated prayer. I'm saying, God, take out all the carbs. Come on, Lord, all the calories and fat grams from the double stuffed Oreos that I eat when the fast is over. Amen. (laughs) Desperate prayers, though. How many of y'all have ever prayed a desperate prayer? Come on. Desperate prayers are prayers we pray when we don't know where else to turn. We've said this before. I think a lot of times in American Christianity, we treat prayer like the glass box on the wall that says break in case of emergency. (sighs) You're going through a lot. I guess you should pray. No, it should be your first priority. It should be who we go to first. Not WebMD and Google. Social media, your best friend. No, no, no. You should be going to the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords, the one who shaped and molded you, the one who knows you and every intricacy of your life, even the compartmentalized things. I struggle with that word a little bit, that intricacy word. (laughs) Now, these are prayers. They're desperate prayers, prayers for a wayward child, a son or a daughter who got caught up in the prodigal life, prayers where you found yourself trying to keep your head above water, prayers where you need a financial miracle or a breakthrough, prayers where you go to the doctor and the doctor says you're gonna be dealing with this for a a while or the rest of your life. Come on, again, how many of y'all have ever prayed desperate prayers? In these prayers you pray, these type of prayers, again, are prayers that we pray when, where else are we gonna turn? There's worship songs. We just sang hunger. We talked about being desperate for him. There's all these worship songs talking about positioning ourselves under the mighty hand of God and saying, God, I can't do this on my own. Carrie Underwood, her famous song, Jesus Take the Wheel. Some of y'all are like, why is he bringing that country song up? It says, Jesus Take the Wheel. Take it from my hands. I can't do this on my own. Then I'll switch to the gospel. Ah! Okay, it's ridiculous. I'm not gonna do this next service. I've enjoyed it, though. I've given it a run. No, this song is all about desperation, and sometimes those prayers are songs, and sometimes those prayers are psalms. David wrote in Psalms 34, watch this. This literally wraps in a bow, this prayers of desperation. He said, I prayed to the Lord, and he answered me. He freed me from all of my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed. What happened? This is the good part. And the Lord listened. He saved me from all of my troubles. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. This isn't a like, I'm afraid of God. No, it's a righteous, sovereign. You are big enough. You are strong enough. The one standing with me will always be stronger than the one who's been standing against me. There's a confidence that says, when I approach you with confidence and I pray, I know that you will listen for the angel of the Lord is a guard. Eight, verse eight, taste and see that the Lord is good. All the joys of those who take refuge in him. And I love this because it stirs up my faith. Again, it, 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 it empowers expectation. And I need you to hear this expectation it's not something in your humanity that you stir up. 
Like, well, I'm just expecting. Or you will it to happen. No, no, expectation is faith. Yeah. Expectation is us building our lives on the rock. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says it this way. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when I'm desperate, I stir up my faith through hearing God's voice on the matter. I hear this all the time. I, know, I hear you. It's a good word, sir. Bearded wonder, I like it. It's but brother, I'm just looking for a sign. Y'all are searching for 59 seconds of fire devotional moments. You're trying to find memes that will just encourage you that you can copy and paste and say like I always say. Stop looking for a sign and just simply open the Bible. Get in the Word. This is everything you need when you need it. Matthew 6, verse 33. Seek first, above all else, as your first priority, the kingdom of God. It's, it's plain and simple, and all these things. That's the clarity you need, the wisdom you need, the peace you need, the confidence you need, the boldness you need, the fight you need, the perseverance you need, everything you need when you need it, yet we rely on, I just, but brother, I need a son. No, you need to get in the Word. You need to get in the Word, because again, there's verses like this that will encourage you, Psalms 37, 25. I was young, and now I'm old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. Or Psalms 46, 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, our very present help in trouble. Or Psalms 27, 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? I want to encourage someone with this right here. You might be desperate, woo, but you're not dead yet. God has breath in your lungs, so there is still a prayer in your heart to be prayed. And this is really good news. I need somebody to grab this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. This should be your anthem the next 21 days. We're hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. I'm persecuted, but I'm not abandoned. I'm struck down, but I'm not destroyed. I woke up again today and I'm breathing. So there's a prayer in my heart that I can pray. And I believe that God will hide me under the shadow of his wings. So when you're in a desperate situation, when you experience desperation, I want you to know that you're not helpless. We choose to stir up expectation through faith, knowing that God will show up and do what he has promised and said that he would do. Come on, if you believe it, shout amen. Come on. Amen. Right, so I think we're all pretty familiar with desperation. Wave at me again. We get the desperation part. So prayer number two, I want to talk about prayers of inspiration. Prayers of inspiration. I have a friend. We were talking. This is a wild story. I have a friend who was praying. He said, I asked God to bless me with financial increase. We're like, good for you. <laughs> it's, we're all doing that, Okay. <laughs> He said, no, no, Pastor Daniel, I prayed for financial increase because I had committed to sow a specific amount in some missions, initiatives, and some things that I was believing God, but I just didn't have the money. But what I have heard you talk about is how obedience isn't always fun, but it is always fruitful. So he said, I have faith that says I'm going to commit to this, and God, I'm going to commit to this open-handedly, so if you provide it, I am going to so it. And so he said, while I was waiting on the Lord, he took me to Proverbs eleven twenty five, which says a generous person will prosper. Okay, great. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Okay. Isn't it funny though, how he was saying, Lord, bless me. Yet the Lord took him to a verse where God said, okay, cool. Go refresh someone else. Yeah. You know, if you dive deeper into this text to refresh someone means to bless someone. So anyway, so we ask God to bless us. And oftentimes we wonder if he's actually hurt us. Like, God, I said I would do it if you bless me. And then you're like, God, are you still listening? Why? Because we really don't like the answer that he gives us. God, I want you to bless me, increase me financially. He's like, okay, cool. I need you to go give something away first. I need you to put some seed in the ground. Because oftentimes he's waiting on our obedience. It's why we're passionate. It's why when Pastor Brandon got up here earlier, I was so excited. 52,000 families, y'all? 52,000 families impacted because of your generosity? 367 more people that will never know what the sin of hell smells like because they committed their lives? Y'all can shout better than that. I feel we're passionate about generosity because it unlocks blessings, and blessings allows for more generosity to be 
released through your life and ultimately so that it can make an impact and a statement that God is our great provider and he is faithful. It's also an opportunity for us to put our faith into action and for obedience to unlock generosity is like a domino effect. I, I, uh, I remember watching uh, this one Oprah episode back in the day and I was so excited about it. I, I went out and did it. She said, you know what would be amazing today is if every one of uh, my Oprah followers will go out and pay it forward, bless somebody in a drive-thru. So I could do that at Taco Bell. Hey, Amen. <laughs> so the big thing was this. It made the news. It was crazy. 376 people out of Starbucks kept paying it forward, paying it forward, paying it forward. Like, I'll get the car behind me. I'll get the car behind me. The baristas were like, this is crazy. The next car. And then it got to that one lady. Y'all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I'll look around the room. She may be next to you. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, man, this is crazy. She's number 377. And she's like, mm -hmm, how much is that car behind me? And they're like, it's $41. She said, mm -mm, I don't, not today. It stops with me. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> it's a domino effect of generosity when you're willing. So my friend says, God, if you'll bless me, I'll bless someone else. Some of you are like, mm -mm, that's the devil. Have you ever been to a restaurant before and the Lord like put it on your heart to bless someone and you're like, that might be a familiar spirit. I don't know. That's $73 extra is not in my budget. Side note, the devil will never tell you to bless somebody. If there's a stirring in your heart, it is from the Lord. I didn't know if I would have time for this story. I love this story. I was preaching at this conference and this pastor brought this guy over to me and he was like, I need you to meet this guy. It's one of the most radical generosity stories I've ever heard. And this guy's a pretty simple guy. He walked up to me and pleaded khakis. Anyways, if you wear those, those are wonderful. Um, I like them. So I'm standing there, and he goes, tell him the story. Tell him the story about the left pocket. Tell him the story. Tell him the story. The guy's like, man, I had $4 and some change that I would put on whatever it was at the end of the day. I would just put on my nightstand. He said, the next morning I got up, and the Lord said, I want you to give that away today. He said, it's not that much. It was like the widow's mite. And he said, and internally I was pretty frustrated because I was going to stop by the gas station and pick me up some snacks. I mean, all of the Bucky stops. Come on. It's a little, pop in and grab the Bucky sandwiches. Amen. So he said, that day, I was standing at, in the line, and this lady next to me was $4 short. I said, oh, my, I got that. So he said, hey, I'll help you out. That $4 was not that big of a deal, but to her, it meant the world. And he's like, God, that felt so good. So he said, the next day, the Lord said, hey, 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 I want you to do it again today, but I want you to do a $5 bill. Every day you do it, I'll put it back. So he's like, five dollars okay, on 30 days, $150. 31-day month, that's 155 Lord, that is, my money is funny. I don't know if that's going to be in the budget. And he said, you know what? I started giving that five every day. And he said, after a period of a few weeks, my boss just popped in and said, hey, man, forgot to tell you this. On your next paycheck, you're going to see a pretty big increase. Uh, you've been promoted. He said, what? He said, I believe it was all tied to this. So he said he went home to his wife. He said, hey. It's getting fun. I'm going to start doing $10 a day. She's like, okay, $600, $620, okay, definitely not in the budget. He said, you know, after a period of time, he said, I had, a, I had a relative I never met that put me in a will. This is a true story. He gets a call and says, are you so-and-so? He said, yeah, yeah, you're receiving this X amount of money. He said, it wasn't huge money, but he said, I'm telling you, I feel like it was directly connected to the seed. So he said, I told my wife, I'm moving to $20 a day. She's like, okay, this is getting crazy. He's like, crisp 20. He said, then I went from 20 and I went to 50. He said, I started giving $100 a day away. And like a farmer gets to keep a little seed himself, God increased me so that I was able to bless others. He said, this pocket right here, Pastor Daniel, has given away over $400,000. I said, my God, where'd you get the pants from? <laughs> Those are not from Marshalls. <laughs> but he said it was that simple act of obedience that provoked generosity in his life. So go back to the story. My friend was inspired. He leaned in, he prayed. He said, God, if you'll give me that person, I will be obedient. He said, there was a girl on staff who was in need of a car. And he said, while the amount was big to him, he felt God say, draw it from your savings and bless her. Again, inspired, he leaned in, pulled from his savings, blessed her with the amount, and then he waited. How many of y'all love the waiting season? 
But you know, the waiting season doesn't have to be a wasted season when you trust God. He said, God continued to encourage me. He said, and I was walking down the hallway at work and a John 4, 26 moment happened. He said, it says this, but the helper of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. He said, I remember all of the things that God asked of me and the commitments I had made. And he said, PD, I had an idea. He said, the only way I can describe it, while I was walking along, it felt like a pebble was thrown in my ear. I said, that was a flying roach. We live in Texas. You're making this thing way too spiritual. Like, is like, ah. He said, no, stop. It was literally like this idea popped in my mind, my heart, and my spirit, and I knew it wasn't for me. It didn't say I should, like it was my own consciousness. He said, it was, you should do this. And he said, I knew it was from the Lord. So long story short, he said, I pursued the idea. He said, while not fully remembering the seed that I had sown, he did all this by being obedient, by refreshing someone else. And then he saw the promise fulfilled in his own life. We went on a trip. He nudges me. He said, Pete, I got to show you this. He said, remember the idea, the pebble? I said, the roach. He said, it was the <laughs> spiritual moment. He said, you remember that moment when God gave me that idea? He said, I acted on it. I followed through. I was obedient. So I committed to sow this specific thing. I committed to refresh someone else and bless someone else. God gave me the idea. And he said, yeah, yeah, this just got a direct deposit in my account, $25,000. You know what I love about this story? Some of you are like, good for him. If God did it for him, he can do it for you. Yeah. Flying roach. Just <laughs> No, God can drop a dream, inspiration from him and bless you so that you can refresh and bless others. God inspired him, and out of that inspiration, he leaned in. And God brought great increase to his life. Watch this, 2 Corinthians Chapter nine, and God will generously provide all you need. Again, so that you will have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. I love these moments. I love these moments because I truly believe that God wants to connect all of the pieces together. He will generously provide everything you need. Come on, think about it for a moment. Has God ever nudged your heart and asked you to do something, an opportunity, a desire to maybe bless someone else? Because there's times we pray prayers of inspiration where we take initiative and we pursue prayer and the ideas and the dreams that God's given us. And sometimes we think that these prayers of inspiration are only things that we like. Like, what's in it for me? But what you like is not the same thing as what inspires you. All right, let me, letting you in my world. We were on vacation. We don't get to do this very often. We're busy people. We have four kids. But anytime we go on vacation, I like to be near the ocean. Now, I'm a seven on the Enneagram. Some of y'all think that's witchcraft. Don't DM me. But I'm very outgoing. I'm like, hey, I just want to be out here on vacation. I want to be under a little umbrella. I want to hide my toes. I don't want to, I love it. But the other thing I love, come on, somebody, I love to eat seafood. Come on, make some noise if you enjoy some seafood. So I'm ordering seafood again, and, and my beautiful bride says, uh, you're ordering seafood again? Another seafood sampler? I said, on this entire vacation, my name is the seafood sampler. Let's go. She's like, okay. And I said, hey. I don't flounder on my seafood choices. If you come at me or my seafood, I'm the king crab. And my choices are all on porpoise. Come on, there's more to this. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is a whole dad joke melody. And she was like, okay, but you're pretty selfish. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't like let any of the kids have any of it. I said, I am selfish with my shellfish. And then she gave me that look. Y'all know that look. So I clammed up and I stopped. Okay, that's ridiculous. You keep asking me not to do it. The people love it. I gotta give the people what they love. So here's the deal. I love that, but I'm not inspired by that. I didn't leave that vacation saying, it's time, babe, it's time. I'm inspired to open Captain D's Seafood Shack. She's like, how about Captain Dan's Seafood Shack? I'm like, that feels good. Let's no, it wasn't what inspired me because I'm not praying for things because oftentimes we only pray for things that we simply like and we forget the voice of God who's truly inspiring us. We focus on material things, things that are man-made and we get so caught up in the canvas that we forget about who the artist is. So instead of walking around on empty because you've only been pursuing carnal interest, how about we start leaning in and praying prayers of inspiration that have heavenly inspiration? 
Because when we focus on what we like, you'll say, again, how can this serve me? But when you focus on what inspires you, you'll say, how can I serve God with this? How can I show up and serve God with this gift? That's why last Saturday, y'all, it blessed us. We came back early and said, we got to be a part of the Packathon. How many of y'all were part of last Saturday's Packathon? We had hundreds of people show up and pack thousands of meals from little grandkids all the way up to their grandparents. And we were united to do one thing, to do something that was bigger than us, to serve rather than to be served, because we knew it was gonna make a massive difference. So don't go after just things that you like. You'll go after what inspires you from the voice of God and serve God with that. Come on, say amen. All right, number three. Last one, I love this, prayers of exaltation. It's on the screens, number three, prayers of exaltation. We have so many things we can praise him for. Come on, the cross, salvation, mercy for every mistake, grace for every goof up. We praise him because he's worthy. And to exalt, prayers of exaltation, to exalt means to lift high. It's like when you lift an umbrella up to provide a covering. Now, none of us have lifted an umbrella in a minute because it is hot and it is dry, Amen. No, no, but it's like that. It's like you lift something to provide a covering. It's something that you can align your life with. When I exalt him as a Christian, someone who is Christ-like, a follower after him, there's so many things in my life that are a distraction that I could raise up in my life, that I could put on a pedestal. But as believers, the one thing that we are supposed to exalt every single day is Jesus. It's the only option. Paul said this in his writings in Acts 17, verses 24 through 28. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man, he made all the nations so that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out the appointed times in history and the boundaries of the lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. This line right here blesses me. Though he is not far from any of us, no matter how far you've fallen away, Jesus is just one mention of his name away from being right there. Though he is not far from any of us, for in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. We are his offspring. Ha, so good for everyone who walks with him, but maybe you're not a Christian. Maybe somebody convinced you to come today. They're like, oh, they got really good music. Maybe somebody told you they were gonna buy you a steak if you would just show up to church. You didn't know who was Golden Corral. Amen. (laughs) Maybe you're not a Christian. Maybe this whole exalting Jesus thing is a little weird to you. What is the value that billions of people worldwide have found in following this man named Jesus? Once again, it's Christ who's lifted high, but not just in worship. It was his sacrificial death on the cross that covered everything. That's the gospel that he sent his only son to cover all of your struggles, all of your shame, all of your goof ups and mess ups. He placed himself in a position to cover us, to take every bad decision, intentional and unintentional, all of your sin and all of the shame. And he overpaid for us overpaid for us so that we could and would continue to experience his mercy and unfailing grace. For those of you who do know him as Lord and Savior, for those of you who have received the kindness that he's offered, the grace and the mercy that we never should have deserved, still, the rest of our lives, we'll never be able to work up enough works-based things to deserve the price he paid because we have received this incredible gift from him, we in return exalt him as Lord. Close your eyes for just a moment and all your brokenness, all your shame, all of your inadequacies. I want you to hear this. God saw you. He chose you and he loves you. He gave you a way, he gave you a way out through salvation. And not only has he given you a way out out of all the sin and out of all the shame, but he's given you a way up to live forever in eternity with him. If you've been a part of Hope City or you've heard me preach before, you've probably heard me say, if Jesus never did anything else but hang on the cross, it would have been enough. Is that price that was paid, covered your tab in full, 
It's healed, restored, and delivered. Everything you've done, everything you're in the middle of, and everything you will ever do because his grace is that good and his blood still works. Look at me again, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, our anchor verse. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. This is God's will for you, Christ Jesus. So this weekend for Custom Fit Week 1, we talked about prayers of desperation. Prayers of inspiration and prayers of exaltation. And again, this is a choice. This is a choice to follow him. Nobody's gonna come to your door and knock on your door and try to get you to come. I've been saying it, to try to force you to come because God's not a forcer. He'll never force himself on your life, but he's a filler. He'll fill every single time when you make room. So I wanna encourage you one more time, show up. Show up and make him a priority in every area of your life because if God is not the God of everything, he's not the God of anything. He's not a part-time God. So he wants you to dive in, take a leap of faith, or take a step of faith. Take this 21 days of prayer and fasting seriously. Stand up, if you will, to your feet as we bring this in for a landing. Lift your hands open-handed like this for a moment. If you want to experience more of him, can you just lift your voices for just a moment? Can you just thank him for just a moment? Can you just tell him how much you love him for just a moment? I'm ending a a little bit early, so you're not going to have to fight the crowds. But right now, with our hands lifted, God, I thank you for those who have prayed prayers of desperation. God, I pray that you would meet them where they're at today. God, I pray for miracles to break out in their families, their marriages, and their individual lives. God, inspire us today. Plant a dream, an idea, a business in our heart that we can run after. And God, I thank you that we exalt you as King of kings and Lord of lords because you have been so kind and you have been so good. And we just throw up our hands across every campus in a posture of gratitude. Hallelujah. Throw up my hands. Praise you. Because all that I have is watching online. Close your eyes for just a moment. I'm going to give you two invitations. The first one is, Pastor Daniel, I don't know Jesus as my Savior, so this whole desperation thing is literally, that's literally my entire life right now. I'm desperate. 
I'm filling voids with so many other distractions, but today, something in my heart has convinced me of the fact that there's more to life than the way I've been living it. So the first invitation is for those who have never asked Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of their life. Here's what we believe in Hope City, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way to the Father. And we believe according to Romans 10, verses nine and 10, that when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. Slate wiped clean, sins thrown as far from the east as the west. He's literally written victory in your story. So here's what's gonna happen in just a moment. I'm gonna count to three, and if you're the first invitation, you say, Daniel, I wanna give my life to Jesus. I'm just gonna ask that you slip up your hand in just a moment, and we're gonna pray. Or maybe you're the second invitation. Maybe you say, Pastor Daniel, I used to live for Jesus, but I got caught up in the prodigal life. I've fallen away. And this weekend, this prayers of desperation and inspiration and exaltation, I wanna come back home, and I wanna rededicate my life to Jesus again, whether you're at Woodlands, Katy, West Houston, additional seating, or watching online, when I hit three, with boldness, I want you to say, you're talking about me, and we're all gonna pray as a church family and believe for restoration, transformation, and the miraculous power of God to heal every area of your life. One, I wanna give my life to Jesus. Two, I wanna rededicate my life. Three, if that's you, would you lift up your hand? I'm looking, I see you and you and you and you, and I see you and you, I see you and you, I see you waving, I see you in the back, I see you over here, here and here. I saw you right there. I see you guys over there and right there. I see you up here in the front. If you're watching online, say yes to Jesus. Our team will help you. Come on, somebody, let's give God praise because a bunch of people just said, today is my day. All right, so we're going to do this. We're all going to pray. Now watch real quick. Maybe you didn't lift up your hand. It's okay. God didn't need to see your hand. He saw your heart. But we're all going to pray from Hope City Worship to everybody in the TV truck. We're all gonna pray this prayer together. Come on, say out loud. Jesus, it's me. I've been living for me, and it's no longer working. From today on, I choose to live for you. Thank you for hanging on the cross, for paying for all my sins. This is a mercy and a grace that I don't deserve, but I receive it. I repent for every sin, all my struggles, and all my shame. And I ask for your forgiveness. From this moment on, I choose you. Thank you for choosing me. You are my Father. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. In Jesus' name.